Hello and welcome to Medievania, the show where we talk about all things pop culture. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing on one thing, and that is the brand new Diablo 4. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Matt. Nick, Hello. And from the award-winning show, Man vs. Meeple, David Waybright. David, Do welcome. you know something I don't know? I have so I don't have many awards that I know of. But <laughs> I give you accolades constantly in my heart, so oh, you're yeah, award-winning yeah. in, in my eyes. Well, thank you, and thank Mine you too. for inviting me. I'm like, very excited to talk about Diablo. So to kick this whole thing off, we said, let's everybody give just a little bit of a history short so we can get to the new game of, uh, you know, what's your history in, D in Diablo? Like, is Diablo 4 your first game or, you know, what, what got you into this famous dungeon slasher? Matt, we'll go around the horn. Uh, so I've played all of them. However, my memory of one is super vague like i don't I, I feel like i've played one don't remember a lot of it two was the the kind of the tipping point for me i played a lot of two and but i i still even with two while playing a lot of it uh never finished it i think i just kind of made characters and leveled up it wasn't until three for me that i beat it with multiple characters and played all the expansion stuff and put hundreds of hours into diablo 3 so while i played one and a lot of two it wasn't until three that i like really finished it multiple times and you know honestly played it right up until this four beta um i have it for multiple systems i have three for the playstation my son and i just started up characters like a couple weeks ago to play couch co-op and that game is still super good like you can play three i think anytime and it holds up which is exciting to jump into four but that's my history i'll pass it to uh david what, what's your history with diablo uh i like you i don't remember playing diablo one but i i can only assume that i did try it and play it to some degree and i i certainly played a fair amount of diablo 2 but again never finished it diablo 3 is the one that i probably played the most of uh my wife actually and i played it and she gets into some of these types of games and we're not always together so we kind of play remotely and sometimes just like when she Netflix cheats on me and watches shows without me, she will like get into a game and then all of a sudden she's like four or five levels ahead of me. And then one of the things that when we get to talking about Diablo 4 that I'm hoping for is that in Diablo 3, sometimes it was very odd to try to play co-op with someone that was not synced up exactly with where you were. It felt a little odd. I'm hoping that doesn't feel that way anymore. And based on the beta, it didn't seem like it, but that's my rough history. Nick? Yep. So I've been playing since the original OG Blizzard fan. Um, and I even remember they had, uh, the first one had Hellfire, which is uh, an expansion released by a different company. It wasn't even Blizzard. Uh, but I got into the Diablo 2 beta, and I lived in like a gamer house in college. So people would fight over my computer, and I would not be there, and I have to lock it down, because otherwise my computer would be on 24-7, because I was the only one in, in, the, in the Diablo 2 beta. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're all I, fighting over your yeah, computer. Yeah, everyone's fighting over my computer, and if I'm not there, they're like, and my, I remember my roommate at the time was like, hey, man, what's your password? I can't get into your computer. Because he wanted to play while, while I wasn't there, like, so... Well, that um, was back too when beta getting into a beta was yeah that was a then. big deal that was a big deal so and we all we had all put in for it but for whatever reason I was the only one who was lucky enough to to get into it and you could only be the barbarian too it was only one class right it was only like act one barbarian but everyone was still fighting over my computer uh, but I've been playing the Diablo games forever so and I I am a lapsed Blizzard fan now though but Diablo four I think is the game that's that's sucking me back in I think I think a lot of people share that Marty how about you. Yeah, so uh, like Matt and David, I don't think I ever played one. So I became a Blizzard fan through Lost Vikings and then really got into StarCraft. And it's like, then in 2000, I looked it up. That's when Diablo 2 came out. So I was like, well, I like these other games. Let me try that. And then I got hooked in Diablo 2. And then obviously Diablo 3, just out of curiosity, uh, I guess everybody, I bet everybody here has multiple versions of Diablo 3 on different systems. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, <laughs> so yeah, I, PC and Switch, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Diablo 3... Uh, my first Switch system was this yeah, bad Diablo boy. What? Nice. what? The special Diablo Switch, which I saw on eBay is going like upwards of eight hundred dollars now. So I won't be getting <laughs> oh rid of this anytime soon. Is, so it's, you, is that your Switch? Do you use that Switch, or is that no, just, not anymore? Because I upgraded to the, in the box. OLED, and I, I put it in here, and it's a, it's got a special Diablo thing on the back, and the uh, 
the the base has some Diablo art on it. That's got the new screen. That's the you said that's the OLED. No, 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 no. I, no, I he uses the OLED. It, no. I, yeah, oh, you replaced it, it with the, the OLED. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I no oh, longer wow. use this one anymore. I didn't even know that existed. That's an awesome box cover. By yeah, the way. it's pretty sweet. It is. Pretty sweet box. <laughs> like Especially I would have that for a uh, Nintendo product. You could yeah. probably just Nintendo, eBay that box yeah. for like a hundred bucks. All right, so give you one fifty. One fifty. One fifty. I'll put it. Yeah, I'll throw it. We'll open bid later on. So Diablo Four beta just happened it was a closed beta if you pre-purchased the game or went and uh, bought a sandwich at kentucky fried chicken you got a code uh, to be able to play and so all of us got to play so here we go what uh oh so first what are some of the main differences or what are the new things that's in diablo 4 that you know of well you talked about switch right that's what i loved the dash the dot the default dodge and like this is the continuation of the dark soulsification of every video game right Getting, getting a dodge button or a dodge roll or whatever. But I love the fact that that was just base. Everybody gets it in Diablo 4. Yeah, that is... I I didn't remember... I, I'm not so well-versed in the games that I could remember whether the old games had anything like that. But yeah, I, I'm i a fan of a dodge button. I, I like. I mean, I like dodge. That's how I play all my games like that, is I'm a dodge roller, so... Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but Diablo 3 didn't launch with a dodge, right? Like, didn't it? The PC version doesn't have it. Only the Switch does. Right. So when it came to console, they added the dodge for the controller. And now they've moved it over, and now it's just universal. It's in the game. And it's also not an unlimited dodge. You have, uh, you, you can yes. only use it so much. But yeah, the consoles, you could just spam the heck out of it. Um, and it was all, it was, it was on the right analog stick, actually. It was like you would click the right analog stick a direction, and you would dodge that way. This is mapped currently to a button which um i have been i don't know about it I, well i know nick's been playing mouse and keyboard but i i have this game on pc and i've been playing with a controller i feel that they have don't you nod your head at me yeah. i'm gonna reach nick, this computer is nick part of the pc I'm, master race well P mouse and keyboard <laughs> dirt for diablo master race if you will like uh i think personally like so i played it um i started off my mouse and keyboard i played hundreds of hours on mouse and keyboard on diablo 3 and then when it came to consoles, I thought that they did a really good job of the controller scheme just for consoles. Um, so I so I tried Diablo 4 beta with the controller, and it's even better. Like it feels built oh. for the controller. It was like, and I'm I'm not looking back. I'm good. I'm playing it on a controller on my PC, and I couldn't be happier. Well, this weekend's open beta, and I purposely played closed beta with keyboard mouse. This weekend, I'm only playing with the controller. I like how scientific you are about this, Marty. It's <laughs> He's like, given a whole it, weekend. It almost yeah. takes all the fun out of playing <laughs> this. And I'm going to have a control group with my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what uh, about you, David? Were you controller? Were you played you play on a controller? I played on the controller. I mean, mostly, I mean, I've been a console gamer for a while. I mean, I've always played PC games too, but I've, I gravitate towards the console because that's where I've been able to play with more people, more friends, uh, and particularly my wife. Um, and so I'll be playing it on console exclusively this time around. And I will say, Matt, one of the things you just said, I think it's probably my favorite thing. And I can't exactly put it into words, but the feel of the control in this game felt more console. Like It just felt tighter and it felt like it just right. You know, like when you're controlling Mario and it just feels right in a Mario <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, well, and I think, again, that comes down to them really mapping the analog, like moving him around on the analog. You can you can make him walk if you go, you know, slower. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you can control his speed. And then also, you know, with the addition of the dodge button, you just have more mobility than you ever have had really, you know, in diablo before i think um yeah i think the speed with which everything was happening too one of the times where it felt that way and ironically not when you're controlling him but when you walk up to a cliff and it says you can climb it and you just push the button and he like really quick just up on top of the next cliff it just felt really fast and smooth and tight and that's un new unlike I it would have been yeah nick nick that's and that stuff is yeah new, there, right? there isn't like extra traversal right which there, there would never was and a lot of times it didn't make sense like it felt bad in like diablo 3 when like you're like on top of something it's like my character could jump down and like i have a barbarian right like i can use mighty leap right and they're like no you can't get there right <laughs> but now you, you can, can right no, those, those things are built in well i think that's cool uh so i know one thing has changed which i actually like from a little time that i played over the weekend was the skill tree layout i think it let, makes a lot more sense to me in this version oh man i'm glad you mentioned I, the skill yeah tree. i know i know this is gonna be a point of contention with matt no i love the skill tree i oh, wait 
Do you, you do you not like the skill tree? No, I, I love the skill tree. Uh, I, I like how because Diablo three held your hands, right? Totally. Hold you only get cool. one skill. You don't have any choice open early on. Like you get spoon fed, like drip fed these skills. But yeah. now it's like, okay, well, how, do you want to be frost? Do you want to be lightning? Do you want to be um, fire right away? And you can make those choices. Yeah. No. I. I. If you know, we played the other night, and if I had maybe. Um, made you think I didn't like it. I, I love the new skill tree. Actually, it's one of my favorite parts of the entire, you know, um, beta. And that is the fact that you have so much choice right from the first skill point you get to immediately. And I wanted to respec. I wanted to try everything. I think that's the part. The only thing I didn't like is it was just like too much choice where I'm like, man, I want to try everything. Yeah. And you start getting level three, four, five. And you're like, man, do I need to respec right now to like, and I did, you know, I played barbarian, uh, mainly, I didn't actually even try the other classes. I'm excited to try Druid and Necro, but I've always just played Barbarian in these games. I just give me a big thing to hit things with, and I'm pretty happy. Uh, but no, the skill tree I loved. So, anyway, yeah, what else you guys got, got on the skill tree? Yeah, I think on the skill tree, the one thing, and you'll have to remind me, did past versions have it such that the spots or the controller mapping would unlock also as you progressed? Cause yes. Okay. Ish. Okay. Yeah. It, I it was it was kind of clumsily executed in three, but it didn't exist. I I may have glossed over this while I was playing this. If there was something in the tutorial uh, while you were doing it, but I wasn't sure when I wanted to buy my next skill. Like, am I gonna have a place to map this? And mm -hmm. then I didn't. Like, mm -hmm. so you couldn't um, until you reached that second node. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. How the nodes, the nodes effectively, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the nodes are what opens up the buttons. I think where you're getting confused, David, is that once you get to eight, you have seven well, skill points, op opens those four. Well, no, back on three, three, you unlock a single skill, right? And then the next level but would unlock it also... a different skill, but it would put it into the slot for you. Like you didn't necessarily unlock the slots, you unlock the skill, which then they just put in the slot for you, and then you could customize it later, right? Like I see. it didn't really show us that skill slots were locked. It just didn't even give us those skills yet. I think I see. that's I think I was I just played it recently, so it's that's kind of fresh was... on the brain. I wasn't sure when I saw all those those button maps at the bottom of my screen with all the locks. I was like, well, how do I how do I unlock those? Because I, I chose like, you know, an ice thing and then a fire thing, say, and the fire thing just replaced the ice thing when I got the fire thing instead of giving me a second one. Yeah, um, so uh, I, I, you didn't get that first extra skill unlocked to like level eight. Uh, and then it opened yeah. up one of the buttons and then like another level opened up the next button. Because oh, I, I play keyboard and mouse. So you had your left and right mouse skills. And we got to level eight, something you would open would pop into that first slot, which would be yeah, it gives you those slotted, four slotted to number one. And then you could slot two, three, and four after that as they opened oh, okay. up. Okay. Yeah. One thing I miss skill wise, I think, is they did have better. I, well, and I don't know yet. I only haven't played a ton, but it seemed there was better modifiers for the skills. Like each skill had a different modifier that you could like change so and you unlocked modifiers as you leveled up as well so you unlock skills you unlock modifiers and if you wanted a certain skill with a certain modifier normally there was some flexibility to do that um i like that um yeah uh, and to that point you know this is game design side speaking they pulled that off the gear and put it onto the character so you're not as gear dependent like all those modifiers existed in previous diablo games but it was tied to specific piece of gear so if you wanted your your frost nova to do something extra you needed to get a ring with that random modifier, right? And you'd always have to wear that ring if you wanted that modifier. Now it's pulled onto the character, which is a beautiful move. So you can always play the character the way that you want to. Well, how, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing that. How is it pulled onto the character? Well, you get those modifiers, right? You, okay, I have Blizzard. Now I can take that first modifier and then I have a choice between the two other things. Of So each skill uh, develops that way. You can take another, if you spend another point into it, that's not just upping the damage. You okay. get some kind of skill modifier, and then you have a choice of another two. But that's oh, what. But there's the how... yeah. There's but there's just the two, right? Like you have the skill, and then there's the two modifiers. You can pick either one. In three, there was the there was I felt like there was more variety of modifiers per skill than just two. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Yeah, but a, lo a lot of those were tied to gear too, though. Like you had to have the yeah. specific sets, and I'm sure that's going to happen in Diablo. They want people to get cool gear and gear sets. But sure. I, I like the fact that a lot of that is on the character now too. 
They yeah, it felt so, that it was core to the character. Speaking of the gear, did I quit, can't remember? Did Diablo three reflect as well as Diablo four the different gear that you're wearing aesthetically, like visually? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, three did. is the first time it did a pretty good job with that. Yeah, this I, I'd forgotten that, and I was just really impressed with this. Although I sat there in my wardrobe trying to change the color on something for I don't know how long, and it wouldn't take. I wasn't sure what I was doing wrong. The but default time... starter gear can't be dyed. Like if yeah, it was no, I know piece... it wasn't that. It was like a hood that I had, and it, it it would look like I changed the color, and then I would close the wardrobe, and boop, I was right back to my old oh, color. Oh, yeah, again. maybe like a not, like you weren't saving it. You can also, what I do like in the wardrobe color, you can change your entire set. Yeah. Like, you don't have to change every piece to the same color. You can just do change full set to blue or green yeah. or whatever, and it and it does do that. I think once you, you get... don't have to buy 12 dies, realize yeah. you buy enough and go buy another die. <laughs> I'm back as to the far vendor. as gear goes in this, I think you do look cooler at earlier levels, though. Like, I mean, I'm like level four. I'm like, I like the way my guy looks right yeah. now. Like, imagine, you know, the end game, you know, stuff and what they're going to be unlocking and how your characters are going to look. That's exciting stuff. Um, <laughs> character wise, what did you play, Marty? Did, uh, did you play Barbarian? No, I played Rogue. What did everyone else play? Rogue here. And Alicia played a sorcerer. Yep, sorcerer supremacy. Uh, no, this, I played both. I played this old weekend. Three. I'll play Necro because it wasn't I'll play, available. I'm gonna play Druid, but now I did hear sorcerer was kind of broken. It's it's really good. I mean, they'll address that in balance. Like sorcerer just felt good no matter what you did, um, and rogue kind of felt like an in between. Like they're okay melee, okay at range, uh, but even if you specialize one or the other, it just like you're just a subpar barbarian, a subpar mm -hmm. sorcerer. I wasn't I wasn't crazy about it. I w I won't play it on release because I was torn. It was like I got some range skills and I got some melee skills, and, and neither of them that great. I'm reading an article here from a PC game that talks about some of the big differences, and one of the things they talk about are um, items. And there's going to mm -hmm. be there was changes to items, and they uh, say here that uh, Blizzard wants to give players more flexibility and doesn't want them to feel like they should just ignore everything that isn't legendary. So they're increasing the potential of power of individual affixes on magic items and they're increasing the number of affixes on rare and bare items, better items in the end game. So instead of just shooting for that legendary, it looks like they're giving some more customization and it seems like there was some additional vendors around that can modify the, yeah, the, the equipment that I didn't understand. So if you beat the dungeons, right, they tell you first time you beat this dungeon, you can unlock this. So and a lot of those, those are the things that would be legendary modifiers. So you can actually change a piece of gear to legendary with that with that jeweler or whatever, because it will put that any of your unlocked modifiers on that piece of gear. I'm a little uh, with Marty, though. I think it was a little it was a little confusing at first. I and I think, confused. yeah, but also like since it was just uh like a closed beta like i didn't really feel like sinking the timer energy into being like uh, i'll worry about this later i kind of did that with the story too i skipped a lot of the story i'm like just let me hit stuff for a little while <laughs> i skipped every cutscene. i don't want another story till i play for real the for cinematics time. were pretty gnarly I, I, well, though didn't see of them well they're anything. oh really they're, wow. they're taking they're kicking I, yeah. the violence up a notch in well, this they, one, they, yes. they went back to the darker vibe like oh, totally two. yeah totally i like it i like it, it a lot is, yeah um, I, I guess it's, I think they still got socketed items. Are still oh yeah. Yeah. We, I was socketing yeah. all my stuff. It was cool that you could, now this may have been different. It may not have been, but, um, I, could you always just socket stuff like straight from your mm -hmm. bag? And do, like, I thought you had to go to someone to have them socket things, but maybe I'm just thinking wrong there. Well, there was the I, jeweler, but, uh, eventually they just let you socket whenever I think. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, I, I mean, didn't come across how, what level did you get to Matt? Uh, I was to uh, 21, oh, okay. I think 21, because I got, if you got to 20 and you have next weekend, this is a tip for everybody. If you haven't had a chance yet, make it to 20 on a character. It will unlock a, um, an item for you in the game. Nick, what's the, what do you get for it, unlocking? You get a title and a backpack, an exclusive title, title and, backpack. and a backpack. So if you want some extra cool stuff for the launch, because you will not get to keep your characters. Everyone's starting over uh, once this thing comes out. But at least if you hit 20, you get a little achievement and a couple bonuses oh, to bring over. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah, and this is the only time you can earn them this week yeah. and next week. Oh, um, well, I know no, what I'm doing it this weekend. Me too. I got, <laughs> yeah. to, I got to 17, so I'm going to grind up on that uh, rogue, and then I'm going to jump over and play uh, Necro. Uh, another thing that changed, no more uh, inventory Tetris. Yeah, I missed inventory Tetris, but it was it. I mean, they they refined everything. Like 
You don't have to buy time portal scroll, scrolls. Your potions are fixed, right? Um, and you talked about, we talked just to talk about how much smoother the wardrobe is. So they just cleaned up so many different things that were kind of a pain in previous games. I guess there is no inventory Tetris. Is there? I didn't even think about it. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just, I, y'all remember that, smart right? Move. <laughs> yeah. It's a smart move. I mean, I think as a longtime gamer, I think there's everyone has an appreciation for that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's also, we have to, you know, like acknowledge what a nuisance some of that is too. Yeah, there's so much quality of life stuff. And I feel that that's what this game is. I, you know, uh, ultimately, I think at the end of the day, Blizzard knows if they just give us the same game every 10 years with a couple cool new things, we're all going to be pretty happy. Like um, playing it felt familiar, but it's that familiar that I wanted. I, I want like... I play Diablo to smash things, level up and get new armor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's it. <laughs> like, really. Yeah. And you give me, you know, if you if you start to veer too much outside of that. And I'll say, though, it does feel a little more MMO. -y. This uh, Marty, this feels like Guild Wars. Guild Wars, too. Yeah. The, yeah. So that has, was my next my, yeah. my next point. Uh, the sure. next big thing that's never happened before is De uh, Diablo 4 is an open world. You can go kind of any area you want. And it is online only, which means you'll run into other people in the game. What are y'all's feelings on that from the beta? I have a question for you guys, because I only got into like when we played it the first night, we got up to about level six and we didn't really encounter a lot of that. I don't know if it's it, it kicked in after a certain point, but the next morning when I played on Monday morning, when I when I realized that the beta was actually going until 3 p.m. my time Monday, I went, oh, I know where my Monday's going. Uh, so I played it that morning and there were people everywhere. And I wasn't exactly sure how it works. Like, what's another game that works a lot like this? Because I would go up, a, you know, one of those like gold circle events where there's like a fight to be had and someone came in and helped or I, I started helping someone. The chest popped and then I started just walking along with this person. And then all of a sudden they just kind of disappeared. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if that's just the way it goes. I, I think all of what? us, all of us can jump in here and, and talk about this, but so, you know, I think once you, uh, once you get to a certain town, it does, it's not like right from the get go. So at the beginning, you're not going to see a lot of people running around with you. Um, but essentially you're on the same server as a lot of other players. Um, you're not partied with them, but you see them kind of running around that, you know, and you don't see all of them. If we saw all of them, Right. Our game would run so slow. It's ridiculous. So you see a select few of people running mm -hmm. around. And yes, those joined events similar in Guild Wars or Destiny. Destiny. Or, that's what it made. Yeah. Me Destiny does the exact same thing where you can party up with your people, but there'll be a community event. And they do this with bosses, too. Did anybody go fight the boss? Like, I didn't, but I want to. I didn't this do weekend. the boss, but I might. Yeah, I might this weekend. It's a timed it, boss. He only spawns every so often. There was a world boss that spawned at certain times. And it was for the East Coast people, terrible times. Like it was, it was. Yeah, never, it's like it's like eleven a.m. Like in the middle in the of morning, your day, right? Yeah. Three in the morning, this thing is spawning, and I'm like, I, no one's doing that. Uh, but it will. It looked like a cool big dragon that you went and fought, and it probably dropped some really cool stuff. I've heard he was really tough. Um, and did anybody encounter the butcher? Because the butcher was a boss from Diablo three that just is a random like NPC that shows up and is apparently really tough. Oh, yeah, so, he's, he's been in every Diablo game actually. Oh, has he? We'll see. There mm -hmm. you go. That's my next year. Um, yeah. So I think that stuff sets it apart. I, I love that because you can play on your own. You can play solo if you don't have a group, but you can still kind of get some sense of community when you're out just on in the world and the, you see an event you're like, I don't really want to do a quest, but I do want to do this event and a bunch of other people come around and I believe you can click on them and ask them to party up as well if you're all doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's neat. And that's yeah, there's, there's a yeah. lot of hidden instancing, right? If you're familiar with, with that from other MMOs, like you have, you know, a thousand instances of that zone, right? And but it's all um, camouflage. Like Blizzard doesn't want you to see behind the scenes. Like unlike a game like Guild Wars, you can't switch between the different ones to find your friends. It's just are you there or not? Yeah, so, and so, you, can, you can see those little hidden zones as you move around. It's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, y'all say Guild Wars too. Very much so, especially with those world events and everything like that. Uh, but when you go into dungeons, those are individual instances. So right. You're never running anybody else in a dungeon. Um, okay. They, they have said that. It's just, and yeah, there's no randoms or yeah, for the story and, events either. But you yeah. can explore the world however you want. Uh, you can, it's kind of like uh, Breath of the Wild, right? You can go off in any direction you want and just explore. You, there's, you're not 
your hand isn't held on the path you take. Yeah. And, and David mentioned this area, like how is this game going to work with people of different levels? Like let's say your wife gets super ahead. One thing I noticed is the level, the enemies scale to the player. So even if you're with different people, like I've seen, like I was like level 20 in like a level six zone, but the enemies were level 20, but they're also level six players in that zone fighting like the same kind of enemies. Oh. So there's some kind of really interesting dynamic scaling going on, going um, on in the background. Yeah. Because Did you guys ever play Borderlands? Yes. Or Borderlands. I think it was, I want to say it was Borderlands either two or three that introduced something like that, where, because in one it was bad, like you couldn't play together because it didn't scale. But in later ones, it was a level 20 to me. If I was level 20, it was a level six to them. That's effectively what you're saying, how this works. Yes. That's oh, what I cool. observed. Yeah. Yeah. And you're still getting XP, both players, you know, there's no kind of like, if you want to call it like rubber banding or whatever that, um, each player gains experience can gain levels and you don't feel penalized for helping out a player who just hasn't caught up to you. It's, it's more encouraging that for groups and friends that want to play together. And yeah, it's individual cool. loot too. There's not like loot stealing or anything like that. So everybody's treasure chest is different and they can't, nobody can steal anything from you. And I think I couldn't tell if it was the same way. I guess y'all probably saw some bushes around too. That oh, you for did. like the, the nodes. Yeah. Those are individual too. Those are individual. Okay. So that is just like Guild Wars too. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only thing on that front that seemed, and again, uh, maybe I'll, I'll get around to enjoying this, but like some of those little gold circle type mm -hmm. events were just, you know, I'd, I'd complete it, then I'd walk just a little away from it and then walk right back and it was happening again, which mm. feels a little weird and kind of takes you out of the, like the fact that it's respawning effectively. So yeah, often. they may have been triggering too fast uh, in the open or in the closed beta. Um, they'll probably, and since the whole world's not open yet, they may yeah, just yeah, yeah. be trigger having them go quite frequently because I remember in like, even in, in Guild Wars or Destiny, it's like... They didn't happen. They happened a lot, but not like so much that you felt like you could just stand there and wait for it to pop back up again. <laughs> right. It was just almost, long you enough. You don't have to like to you could farm it, right? Like, yeah. but I guess at the end of the day, you could. Guild Wars Two has a system of where uh, it's usually a, a, what's called chained events. Uh, there's a public event that will kick off that gives you a quest to go here, to go here, to go here, to go here, that culminates in like a bigger event. And these just seem to be like random spawns here and there, as opposed to any like yeah. arc that you kind of played through. Um, there was one other thing I was going to bring up. Oh, were there mounts in Diablo 3? I can't remember. Uh, horses? Mm -hmm. Okay. That, I guess you saw the stables. Yeah, right. There's going to be mounts in this game. Yeah, but they yeah. locked off that quest. That let's you get a mount. I was sad. Uh, I want exciting. a mount. I'll, think, I'll say with mounts, this kind of like half and half online MMO, th like it feels like, the, the, you know, dipping the toes and what would a Diablo MMO yeah. be, right? Like, this is almost like them introducing a lot of the mechanics and, you know, do they do this big Diablo MMO? And would it, you look at game, I don't know if anyone played Lost Ark, um, but it does feel like it shares some stuff with Lost Ark too. Yeah. Um, so do they follow, you know, that path or are they going to eventually maybe some create some, you know, monthly service MMO Diablo? Any concerns? Uh, the only one I have is, and I don't think they're going to mess this up, uh, hopefully, microtransactions. I assume it's just going to be cosmetics only. And as I've long as it's cosmetics, cosmetics yeah. then I am 100% A-OK -okay with it. If it's anything yeah. else, I'll have an issue with it, but I doubt they'll do that. Same. This I never is, have an issue with any of that. It doesn't bother me at all. I, I well, it, well, I'm it's a big deal. It was a big deal in games, in PvP games, especially Battlefield sure. was the one that kind right. of kicked that all off with the pay to win. It's not yeah. such a big deal in this one, but it is kind of fun to go and get that random legendary drop as opposed to I'm just going to spend twenty bucks and buy it. Yeah, the real money auction house in three was like a big. Oh, big that was thing. terrible. They had to take that thing out, man. That yeah. was that was trash. But. I would, now, this isn't necessarily for me, but I've seen this complaint pop up a little bit, and we did touch on it here or there throughout our discussions. Is it too much of the same? Like, is it not enough of a push forward for the series? Like, that pe maybe people are expecting more out of it. Again, I think it it's exactly what I'm looking for out of Diablo. However, there might be players looking for more. Um, I have seen people hmm. say it might be a little bit too too much like 3. I can recognize why someone would say that for sure. I mean, just the same, what you said earlier, it was basically more Diablo and that's why you liked it. 
I mean, I guess that's going to maybe rub some people the wrong way, but I think I'll, I don't think you're unique, Matt, in that you enjoy that in your Diablo. That's what I enjoy out of it. You know, it's just like, oh, it's more Diablo. And there's a little bit more, you know, there's these world events and there's, you know, all that. So in the, the connectivity with all the players, to me, that is easily enough to make this uh, more. But yeah, we'll have to see what people think. I Again, Blizzard doesn't care because those people are going to go, uh, I'll, okay, I'll play. <laughs> what systems is it coming out on? Is it pretty much everything? Everything, I think. I don't think it's coming out on Switch at launch. No, probably no, no, not. No. You're right. It is not. I, I wonder if it ever will. It probably won't be this iteration. It probably to be the Switch. I don't think. Too, yeah, I, I, think. I do like think the, curly, cur yeah. the current Switch would have a problem running this. Is it coming out on last gen PlayStations and Xboxes? Mm. I, doubt, I doubt it. I don't. I, I don't. I don't I'd have to so. look it up, but. I really think this game would be probably PS5, Xbox, uh, series, series, series X, and you know PCs. Yeah, it does look great though. Like I do think that, it, you know, the, I just the land. This. Yeah, the it, it, it is on PS4. It will be. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. okay. Um, but like the landscapes, the details, the frame rates, like the special effects, all the special effects on all the you know um, skills that you upgrade look super cool. I think it's um. It's really impressive to look at when you really get into the details. Like that's why I like playing this on PC because I play the monitors like two inches from my face, so I feel like I'm in Diablo. You know, like and that's just I can see all those details a lot better. Are you playing on PS5, David? Yes, I is am. It, is it 4K support? Uh, you know? I I don't know. I didn't really. I just played. Like okay. I didn't. I didn't go in there and tweak anything. In fact, I don't typically do that on many of my games. I. I can, you know, if, if something's bothering me about how a game looks for some reason, I might get into the settings, but otherwise it looks good. Yeah. Now it's, it was beta weekend. So I assume I did have some lag. I did have some rubber banding, but yeah, I, I got assume it's just, I got tests, kicked. I got so. kicked. Um, oh, you did. Oh yeah. I got kicked a few times. Yeah. I got kicked a couple of times too. I didn't have any problems. Although I, so I was a little like, like I knew this was coming, um, but I didn't think about it. And then of course everyone was talking about it. So I was like, Hmm. I'm going to buy it anyway, so I guess I'll pre-order it so I can get the beta code. So Saturday, after, it was Saturday afternoon at 1.31. I can tell you that for a reason, because I did it. I ordered it. I got my email from Amazon saying, congratulations, you ordered it. And I didn't get a code. So I got in touch with customer service. And I was like, hey, uh, I was supposed to get a code. And they're like, oh, yeah, it happens within 24 hours. I'm like... Yeah, but here's the thing with that. Um, yeah, 24 hours. It's going to be over. Like, you missed that. I know. I said, so I did wait 24 hours. And then it was like, literally, I was looking at the clock. It was 1.30. And I was like, oh, okay, it hasn't shown up. I'm going to get back in touch with customer service. And literally, I no sooner asked them, what about this code? And they're like, oh, we sent it, but we'll send it again. So they sent it like right then, as I called. They like waited all 24 hours before they gave me the code. So then we spent a good portion of the rest of Sunday playing. So you're uh, getting the physical version? Are you? Uh, the... Yeah, I, I'm kind of a physical version guy still. I'm old school. I don't know. I mean, these guys aren't. They've trade. They're they're traders. They've gone. I mean, to digital. Mine, Matt, Matt's pretty physical. I I think I'm I the only like. Really Star, I was you know. just talking about the physical <laughs> version right. of CS Stars. I'm... I bought. Uh, I listen. I'm. I, I go back and, and I bought Metroid Prime physical. Marty's like here bashing me. I'm like. I I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, well, here's the thing. I bought. Well, I'm playing on PC. There's not a physical option. Correct. So I'm PC. I yeah, PC. Key. I was like, I just bought it on the Blizzard store, and I knew yeah. I would be able to get in beta access. So I was like, I'll just yeah. get yeah. this here, and then if I. I honestly still might get it for uh PlayStation to be able to do couch co-op, you mm -hmm. know, down the road and play that. But um we'll see. I, I just oh, this, I, this brings up a good question. I don't know the answer to. Maybe you do. Is it cross platform? Or yes. No? Yes. yes. But, yeah, they even had cross play enabled for um, Okay, so I'm I can play with someone on the, I can play with all you guys. If yeah, I I, to, yeah, to be honest with you, we should play this upcoming weekend. Yes. We should try to get the four weekend. of us together. Oh, that'd and be cool. Go, go do some like serious playing. Uh, I'll dude, be in a I actually saw this you online. I'll, I'll bring my laptop. <laughs> Marty it, started it, a guild. We have a guild. Yeah, yeah. Is Anyone that is, are are clans new? That's a clan. No, they were in, they, they were in three. In, they were in three. They were in three. Okay. Um, yeah. So David, I actually saw you in my Battle.net window that you were online, but uh, now that I know it was actually from your PS5. Oh, okay. All right. So. Yeah. Speaking of um, the sort of late game, someone mentioned earlier. Did any of you guys get into that stuff? Like, I pretty much play these games. 
for the story, get through it, you know, complete it. But what was all the, you know, Diablo three, there were some hardcore people yeah. that like got into the and, and two also. Stuff. I, I I was a big ladder person in, okay. in two and three. What so. what is the what is the poll there? What are you doing? Like what's the payoff? You, your your name is on the leaderboard. That, that's the payoff. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and if you if you like the if you just like playing it, it at least gives you something to chase. And the seasons gave you like exclusive gear, right? Like you could get gear from the season. Yeah, you get exclusive cosmetics. But and and I was, go ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it's those types of players that most have a problem with sort of the uh microtransactions and stuff like that right that, that right because they win. will provide an unfair advantage yeah. yeah there there will be a battle pass it has a battle pass type system um so that's gonna be coming there's gonna be pvp i'll probably not, get the battle pass not for me <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna do pvp either but pvps that's different uh huh. that's been in since two right they had like the coliseums in two and three Oh, I mean, that's right. See, yeah, I can't I mean, keep them all straight. It's it's never been like big though. Like it's never been a thing. Like no, nobody's ever really cared about it in the Diablo game. We'll see how they implement it in four. Battle Pass I'm, sounds interesting to me. Just I mean, it's not like I want to spend more money, but at the same time, if they give me a little bit more to chase cosmetically and stuff, sometimes that's fun. So it depends on what's on the Battle Pass. I'm not against Battle Passes. I buy them mm-hmm. for I got I have the Marvel Snap Battle Pass. I have the um Fortnite battle pass like I generally get battle passes if it gives me something to chase and it let I mean again usually they're five ten bucks or whatever and it's a little extra stuff to chase so I like it I don't need anything else to chase I need to chase the stack of games I haven't played that's what I need to chase <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's I, I, I'm there with you speaking of uh, any, any final thoughts on Diablo and we're just going to wrap I, this up with speaking I can't of wait games for we're Friday to, to come I can't wait for Friday to come and we absolutely call me because i want to get in there and play with yeah let's do it well well, nick's gonna be out nick how are you gonna play the open nick i'm gonna take my laptop nick's going to to a so nick uh will be out traveling and but i'll I'll bring i will bring my laptop so i will still be able to play he's gonna be at this convention in his hotel room playing the open beta with us (laughs) i love it uh speaking of stacks of games to play uh what uh what y'all currently working on as we wrap up this uh quick episode here nick what are you playing uh, Phantom Brigade. It's the uh, oh! mech technical mech game where you can kind of see five seconds into the future. Super fun. Very cool. Is it good? Like I, I saw something about it and I was like, oh my gosh. Once someone said that it was about like kind of like video editing in terms oh, of... Oh yeah, like, 100%. Like that uh, sounded you, really interesting. Each mech is basically like a layer, right? And you can see five seconds ahead and you're basically editing the different layers and planning out their actions then you play it, right? So yeah, it's like video editing. 100%. It sounds super cool. I got to try that. It, th- it has a cool look to it. Yes. Uh, I, uh, you know, I haven't been trying to get through anything lately, so I'm a big pinball fan and I like digital virtual pinball. So pinball effects had their newest version drop. I don't know, sometime in February, I think. Um, and this is the first time they've revved the game and made everyone rebuy all the tables, which was not a uh, positive for many people, but it's been like over a decade since they originally released. So I think it's understandable. So I got that and bought a bunch of tables and I've been playing pinball. Some of the new tables, speaking of Borderlands earlier, uh, they have a Borderlands table. And oh, that's cool. I actually got my son who is home from college to try it with me begrudgingly. Like literally it was about the time to take him back. And he's like, fine. He played, he played once. And he's like, I think I'm going to download this when I get back to school. And then and then we were like playing. He'd set up tournaments and the two of us would play. So regardless of how much I like pinball, the fact that I was able to play with my son virtually at college made me happy. <laughs> yeah, cool. that's re- that's really cool. What are you playing, Marty? I am probably about three quarters of the way through uh, Metroid Prime Remastered. Oh, uh, I waited to get the physical version before I started playing. And I am I'm not rushing through it. I'm just kind of taking my time. An hour here, an hour there. Really enjoying uh, playing that again. And once this is said and done, it will still be one of my all-time favorite video games. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, And, and I'm same. I've I've been playing a little bit of Prime, not as far as you, uh, but I've been bouncing around a lot. And I think that's what where Diablo like kind of fell on a good weekend because I really wasn't, you know, I, I've been trying to finish a ton of different games all at the same time. And I just reinstalled Final Fantasy um uh, online uh so i've been kind of working oh, wow. through okay. what's that 
14. Yeah, 14. Um, so I'm in the second expansion trying to, and I'd like to see all the expansion content. Uh, so just like streamlining the story beats as, as much as I can. Uh, no guild, no other people that I've been even playing with, just uh, just trying to see all the story stuff uh, for that before Final Fantasy 16 comes out. Uh, but we'll see if that, you know, if that sticks. Uh, but currently I, I recently just reinstalled that. And uh, yeah, that's it right now. One final thing, because I never get to talk video games with anybody because I do yeah. board game podcasts and my co-host doesn't talk about board game, video games. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's what we're playing. What's the next game coming up that you're most excited to play that's most uh, uh, coming up the, su- the quickest, the soonest? Here, I'll go ahead and start. Okay. Uh, my next game will be one month from today is Advance Wars uh, 1 and 2. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, the oh, is that finally coming out? Yes, it is. Oh. Nintendo <laughs> just shared today, one month from today. So I am finishing up Prime. They're going to play around some other stuff here and there, but I'll, that'll be the next game I jump into. Uh, for me, oh, man, this is tough. It's It was Jedi Survivor. I should be playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor right now, but it got delayed a month. So um, that's around the corner. I'm really interested in the Resident Evil 4 remake. Uh, That's this weekend. That's this weekend, yeah. They've been getting... I mean, it's like perfect scores down the line, and I love Resident Evil 4, but I haven't played it since the GameCube GameCube. version. So it's like, do I want to go back and do that? Um, Yeah, we'll see. I think those are the two newest ones for me is is, is Resident Evil 4. And um, yeah, Jedi Survivor, when that drops, I'll play that. I'm going to have to uh, I'm I'm setting my sights on my stack of shame first and foremost. But as I'm sitting here trying to think about games that will release that I'll probably purchase and stack on the bottom of that stack of shame, <laughs> uh, like some of the PS5 stuff that's supposed to come out this year. Um, I think Spider-Man 2 is coming out this year. Yeah, I will. It is. There's no way I won't buy that. I loved the first Spider-Man game. It was awesome. I still need to play all the way through Miles Morales, which I haven't mm-hmm. played. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to get two, which looks awesome. Oh, so it's like, okay. So there's nothing coming out before September. You're interested in probably not. Okay. I, I, I take them as they di- come. I take play- them as they come. Tears of the next Kingdom? Thing is Diablo. I'll probably buy tears of the kingdom. But like I said, I, I cannot play that until I play breath of the wild, which I've not finished. Not even close. Final fantasy 16. 16 eh. soon, yeah. Is that okay. yours, Nick? That's mine, yeah. yeah. Oh, don't end me. That's 16 is gonna be so good. Like, I can't wait for 16. Yeah. And that's a little bit further out, though. So, I kept it off of my immediate next thing. That wait, I when's, play, but... when's Street Fighter 6 drop? That's soon, well, too. June Street 6th. Fighter 6 is, yeah. I think, before that. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. 2023 is an insane year for games. It really is. It's, it's a good year for video games. There's some mm-hmm. great, there's some great stuff. I mean, even. You know, yeah, looking further out, we don't even know. I think once the summer comes, they usually announce a bunch of stuff that's going to be out for the holiday. Um, Because even though Spider-Man 2 hasn't been announced, we think it's going to be this year. So I think it was. I hope yeah, so. It just yeah. got leaked. I'm today. not like super excited about Starfield, but it'll probably end up being really good and I'll end up playing it. That's how I feel. I'm very pessimistic for some kind reason on that game. But inevitably, I bet it comes out and it'll be like, oh, yeah, you guys were pessimistic. This is the next best game ever. So, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll be honest. I was pessimistic with Diablo 4. Sure. I really was till I played it. Went, really? Ooh, there's the okay, sound. Ooh, a, this, I I, to, a, to me, sounds are very nostalgic, and they didn't change any of the sounds for drinking a potion <laughs> or opening a chest. It's like, oh. Well, that's true. That's true. I just sat back in the chair. It's like, it's so comfortable. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like com- it's, it's like, it's like comfort food. It's like comfort food. Yeah, it is comfy. <laughs> it's a comfy game. I have Even a, I have a quick, hopefully it will be a quick question. It is video game related. It's also movie related. And I don't know if you guys have already talked about this, but who all of you are going to see Mario like day oh. one? I already got my tickets. I already got my tickets. Me too. All right. We got, them, we got them for like let's, Wednesday night. At let's like book 6, it. We 10. got it. We all got to come back here that week and record our thoughts on it. Anticipation, yes. pessimism. I think it, I, I personally don't go on record it's saying too, it's going to be great. High. Yeah, it's, it's so high. I think the trailers I'm, have sold us. I Especially bet it breaks a billion ones. dollars worldwide. I, I've, I told someone the other day that I think it's probably going to be one of the top grossing movies this year. And they thought I was crazy. And I was like, nope, I feel like the Lego movie all over again. It's going to be yeah, massive. They got, they got the right studio. They got the right humor. That obviously, you know, obviously, I think the cast was people didn't know. But now that some of the newer trailers out, I think yeah. people are getting really comfortable with the cast. And uh, yeah, I we can't wait. We we're actually 
we're going that I think it's either Wednesday or Thursday night, whatever the first night what? is. Uh, and, I'm, and it's a seven o'clock and I'm taking my little man. So we're going on a school uh, night. It's, it's a, it's going to be special. We can't wait. He's going to So that us. week, go ahead, write it down. All four of us will get back into we will. the movie. We'll review. give our thoughts yeah, on down, Super I'm Mario the movie. Sure. Yep. All right. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for taking this little deep dive with us on just the Diablo 4 beta. That was just the beta. Wait till the actual game yeah, comes the out. Then we'll be going crazy about it. So it sounds like we have a date in early April for a movie review and uh, as always, it's been Marty, Matt, Nick, and David. Thank you for joining us. I think he does so well in that fourth chair. We just have to leave that fourth chair for him. I've <laughs> yeah, already got OBS we'll, set we'll up with we'll the window We'll keep it spinning, yeah. We'll keep yeah, it spinning so, for him. So uh, once again, thanks, everybody. Make sure to follow us on, uh, let's see, uh, Twitter and TikTok. Is it Mediavania? Yeah, Matt? it is. At Mediavania. And make sure to subscribe and like. We appreciate it. See y'all.